All right. Uh, welcome back, everybody, friends, uh, countrymen, dissidents, expats, uh, whatever you choose to call yourself out there in COVID land. Welcome back to whatever the hell this is. Uh, I still don't quite know yet getting the kinks worked out. I've been playing around with this broadcast software and having quite a bit of fun with it. And over the course of my normal daily activities, uh, as some of you may already know, I do get fed information from sources all over the world, uh, many times in real time. And some of those, you guys already know who they are. Some of them will remain anonymous for the time being and possibly uh, indefinitely. But one of my sources that I believe at this point, everybody should be familiar with. Her name is Maddie Bannon, and she is an accomplished writer in her own right. From time to time, uh, Maddie will send me items of news that comes across her radar that she finds interesting, and she sends them along to me to see what I can find in them. Uh, this week was no exception to that practice as Maddie sent me an article from Wired magazine that was published back on April 3rd of this year. So let's see, we're recording this on April 19th, 2023 at uh, about 12 o'clock Acapulcano time. Uh, so this article is just over two weeks old at this point. The headline on it, as I'm sure you guys can see right there, artificial wombs will change abortion rights forever. And what is now being called ectogenesis or gestation using an artificial womb is fast approaching reality. Yet without legislation, this innovation also has the potential to cause harm as if somehow new laws are going to magically prevent this technology from harming a single individual. I mean, it's worked every single time in the past, right? Uh, what, uh, what could we possibly have to fear? And, you know, I think it, it bears pointing out before we jump into the article here that, I don't know, again, your results may vary, but based on, on what I have been seeing trending over the course of, we'll say the last six months, but it's been pretty heavy over the course of about the last two to three months is there has been a heavy push in the mass media to uh, seed the idea uh, or the ideas, I should say, of transhumanism into the general populace through uh, the normal vehicles, essentially your, uh, your, your television programming, your, uh, terrestrial radio programming, uh, your movies, your music, uh, all the normal vectors that have been used to shape the way society thinks about various issues at various points in time. Now, again, you're welcome to disagree with me on that. You may think that there hasn't been a massive push uh, to get people to recognize this thing called transhumanism, you know, from either side, either from the side of the pro transhumanists or the side of the anti transhumanists. You might think that everything that's going on is just business as usual. If that is your choice, that's fine. But I would tell you that I respectfully disagree with you. And apparently the folks over at Wired would disagree with you, uh, at least on the surface as well. But we'll get into that in a little bit. For those who may not be aware, uh, for the people that think that the publication Wired is specifically about digital technologies and being on the, the, the cutting edge, or I believe they call it now the bleeding edge, uh, of new technologies. And let's take a moment to recognize that when they're talking about the latest and greatest, the newest of the new technology, 
uh, it implies bodily harm from cutting, which results in bleeding. Isn't that interesting? Anyway, uh, let's move on. Let's dive into the article here. Again, published to Wired.com on April 3rd, 2023. Artificial wombs will change abortion rights forever. So one day, human wombs may no longer be necessary for bearing children. Interesting. In 2016, a research team in Cambridge, England, grew human embryos in ectogenesis, or the process of human or animal gestation, excuse me, in an artificial environment for up to 13 days after fertilization. A further breakthrough came the next year, when researchers at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia announced that they had developed a basic artificial uterus named the bio bag. That's, that's an awesome moniker right there. The bio bag. Yeah. You just, you take that fetus, you throw it into one of these, uh, bio bags, uh, you cook it at 400 degrees for about 30 minutes. And and that's some good eatings right there. Okay. So the bio bag sustained, lamb fetuses equivalent in size and development to a human fetus at roughly 22 weeks gestation to full term successfully. Then in August of 2022, researchers at the Wiseman Institute of Science in Israel created the world's first synthetic embryos from mice stem cells. In the same month, scientists at the University of Cambridge used stem cells to create a synthetic embryo with a brain and a beating heart. And isn't it interesting that the place where this research is said to have happened is the Wise Man Institute of Israel? Uh, Fun with language, folks. It never ceases to entertain Moving on, ectogenesis has the potential to transform reproductive labor and reduce risks associated with reproduction, Uh, which, if memory serves correct, the only risks that used to be associated with reproduction were things like sexually transmitted diseases and, on occasion, the rare possibility that birth would actually cost either the mother or the child and sometimes both their life, although... Even with today's uh, modern medical standards, that occurrence is still extremely, extremely rare. That is one thing uh, that has not changed over the course of time. So this new technology could enable people with wombs to reproduce as easily as cisgender men do without risks to their physical health, their economic safety, or their bodily autonomy. Autonomy. Okay, so here we have the framing, all right, for this new technology and how they're planning to market it to the population. So apparently, childbirth is one of the most dangerous things that you could potentially do uh, with your life and your body, according to the Wired article, of course, because It says right there, as I read, it could enable people with wombs to reproduce as easily as cisgender men. And the interesting thing there is they never actually identify who these people with wombs are, but they show that their counterpart in the process is men. So I guess we're just going to have to assume that people with wombs are women because they don't actually specify it in the article, or maybe... We should just stick a placeholder there and we'll come back to it later. I think that might be the better thing to do. Moving on. By removing natural gestation from the process of having children, ectogenesis could offer an equal starting point for people of all sexes and genders, particularly for queer people who wish to have children without having to rely on the morally ambiguous option of surrogacy. So, all right. Uh, you know, I'm just, I'm a regular dumb guy and whenever I'm reading through stuff, I have questions, right? Cause it seems like the longer human progress goes on, uh, the less 
our ability to communicate um, very specifically with one another seems to be uh, just, you know, becoming a thing of the past. Uh, it, it's interesting that they point out uh, the morally ambiguous option of surrogacy. Uh, and I wasn't even exactly sure that we had gotten to the point where surrogate pregnancies were now morally ambiguous or even uh, morally offensive at any point. I don't, again, your results may vary. I don't ever remember this being an issue in the past where people were having somebody else carry their child to term, uh, typically for money. And then once the child is born, they, they turn it over to the parents that paid for the surrogate pregnancy. And like, it was, it was a business arrangement, right? That's how I always understood it to be. There was no moral, uh, there was no real moral quandary about it. It was, if you had the money and you wanted to do it, you could do it. But anyway, uh, as I often do, uh, I'm, I'm digressing. Let's, let's keep going, because I'm sure there's a lot more in this article for us to uncover. So if safe and effective ectogenesis were made available, as opposed to being privatized, which risks further entrenching social and economic inequalities, the technology could result in a more prosperous and more equal society, yet development of ectogenesis could also wreak havoc on the hard-fought right of women and people with wombs aha, to access safe and legal abortion and could significantly weaken abortion policies worldwide. And there we go. There is the actual argument that is being made in the article. It's not because they want to make pregnancy and giving birth easier. It's that they want to make sure that access to abortion is not diminished as a result uh, of either this new technology or the fact that apparently pregnancy and childbirth uh, are so very dangerous and threaten the, uh, ex uh, the continued existence of the human species. So current, philosoph current philosophical literature, easy for me to say, and legislation on abortion revolve around three debates. The moral status of the fetus, woman's bodily autonomy, and the fetus's viability. Ectogenesis means that fetuses at all stages will be viable, so the technology's development will impact all three of these debates. Well, if this new technology means that a fetus, regardless of what stage of growth they are at, will remain viable all the way up to what we have traditionally called birth and the beginning of life uh, in this world, or at least life outside of the womb. I know, I know some of you are uh, going to argue that life begins at conception. I'm talking about life outside of another human being's body. Uh, which apparently some humans get well into their 30s or 40s and still do not manage to cross that threshold. But uh, back to the point, fetuses at all stages will be viable. Doesn't that by itself eliminate the need for abortion? Seems to me like it would, but you know, again, I have uh, crazy thoughts that are not sanctioned uh, by the lamestream media. So take that with as much salt as you need to swallow it on down. Anti-abortion advocates tend to argue that the fetus is human at conception and that killing an innocent person by abortion is immoral. And I would agree with that. Pro-choice defendants of abortion rights, meanwhile, emphasize bodily autonomy and draw on arguments such as those made by philosopher Judas, Judith Thompson in her highly influential 1971 essay, A Defense of Abortion. Thompson argues that even if a fetus is a person at the moment of conception, a woman's bodily autonomy or her right to decide what can happen in and to her body means that it is morally acceptable to remove the fetus from her body. 
The ensuing death of the fetus is an inevitable consequence of ending the pregnancy rather than the woman's intention. This means that abortion is more an act of self-defense on the woman's part than an intentional killing. Well, as far as that argument goes, in a court of law, you can invoke uh, the right of self-defense if you feel that your life is being threatened in order for you to be able to justify the killing of another human being. In other words, that other human being that you are exercising your self-defense against was going to try to kill you. So it was literally at a point where it was either you die or you kill the person that is trying to kill you in a malicious manner. The problem with trying to, uh, what would the word be, equivocate, I believe, an abortion with murder in self-defense is, you know, last time I checked, I didn't think that most fetuses had developed to the point where they could actually develop malicious intent against their mothers and try to kill them in the uh, process of childbirth. I could be wrong on that, though. If anybody has any studies uh, that they can link to to uh, shore up that point, please drop it in the comments below. Uh, but after almost five decades of walking around on this rock, uh, I, I haven't found any evidence of it. So uh, if you can find it, hats off to you, and I would love to see it. Moving on. Meanwhile, in an effort to strike a balance between women's bodily autonomy and the fetus's moral status, abortion legislation in many countries uses fetal viability, a fetus's ability to survive outside the womb, including when assisted by medical devices, as a measure to determine the moral acceptability of abortion. Under law in many places where abortion is permitted, the fetus's right to life transcends a woman's bodily autonomy at the point when the fetus becomes viable. Abortion law in the United Kingdom, for example, allows abortion only before 24 weeks of fetal development, the earliest development stage from which a fetus can survive with the help of medical devices. Successful ectogenesis would render the fetus viable at an early stage, possibly even from conception. If ectogenesis, even partial ectogenesis, becomes available, it would then be possible for an unwanted fetus to be transferred into an artificial womb to continue developing without harming a woman's bodily autonomy, depending on how the fetus is removed. In this way, women would be able to end their pregnancy without resorting to traditional abortion. Given this option, if a woman chooses traditional abortion regardless, the abortion will appear more like an intentional killing. So, if I am reading this article correctly, hold on, let's, let's actually uh, hit the next sentence before we start unpacking here. As a result, if abortion jurisprudence continues using fetal viability as its central criterion for whether abortion should be allowed, abortion in the ectogenesis era risks becoming less morally and socially acceptable than it is today. Really? That's interesting. So essentially what they're saying here is we have a way to cleanse you of all the guilt that is associated with the process of abortion, the act of ending a pregnancy, an unintended pregnancy, although I would have qualms with the word unintended because if you have unprotected sex, uh, you know that a likely outcome of that choice is pregnancy, right? I mean, unless one or both of the people who are engaging in the act are completely sterilized, pregnancy is one of the potential outcomes of that act. When you make that choice, you do so, whether you realize it or not, with the intent that a child could be produced as the result of your choice. So it seems like what they are saying 
in this article is we want to make it much, much easier for people to make poor choices with their lifestyle. And, you know, if they should uh, end up incurring some sort of negative outcome as a result, well, the state and our godlike scientists have come up with the best possible solution so that you don't have to worry about all those poor choices that you have been making well, pretty much uh, since you were uh, first put into government school, right? Because that seems to be where the majority of us develop the habit of poor choice making. But let's continue because there's more. Another possible scenario is one in which a woman wants to abort, but her partner wishes her not to. In the absence of the bodily autonomy argument, the fetus's viability and supposed right to develop combined with the partner's wishes could result in a situation that pressures women to transfer the fetus to an artificial womb. Oh, you poor women. You poor women having all of this pressure put on you by those horrible horrible, hateful men that just want to, to domineer you and uh, turn you into a baby-making factory and uh, whatever the other uh, propaganda is that they've been uh, tossing around since the 1950s and 60s. By the way, uh, for our feminist fans out there, I would imagine there's quite a few, uh, or very few, I should say, uh, not quite a few, uh, I might even be able to count them all on one hand. Uh, but for our fans of feminism in the audience, it might be worth knowing that Gloria Steinem, that great feminist champion uh, from the 1960s and beyond, spent most of her career on the CIA payroll. Something you might want to ponder. Do a little bit of research on. Uh, figure out how you can internalize that information so that it makes sense in your worldview. But uh, it's out there. It's documented. And uh, it's just waiting for you to uh, go and discover it, uh, among other things. So as ectogenesis develops further, activists and legislators will need to address the question, at what point is it justifiable for a woman to choose traditional abortion when there is another option that guarantees both the ending of the pregnancy and the fetus's ongoing chance at life? At what point should the desires of women not to become biological mothers outweigh a fetus's purported right to existence? And again, right there, we have a little bit of the quiet part being exposed for all to see. Essentially, it seems to me what is being put forth with this new technology, these artificial wombs, uh, or as they so lovingly call them, bio bags, what is being done here is to make it as easy and anxiety-free as possible for uh, the slaves of the state to hand their children over to the government because they, they don't want them. It's an unwanted pregnancy, right? I made a poor choice. I got pregnant. Now I've got this kid that I don't know how to take care of. I don't, uh, I, I probably I'll do a, a crappy job because um, that's what everyone's told me my entire life. Uh, and, uh, it's, it's just a nightmare. It, my life would basically be over from this point forward, yada, 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 all the bullshit that they have pumped into our heads, literally from our own births, uh, about how terrible we are at raising children, or at least how terrible we are at raising children that then are supposed to go on to become interchangeable humans, uh, in the global economic machine. But yeah, it seems like they are making it as easy as possible for people to literally hand their children over to the state going forward. Because again, this, this is not technology that is going to be uh, just like niche, right? This, this is not going to be an option that you will have when it comes to having children. Once this gets adopted, 
just like everything else that we have seen throughout the course of history in the United States. Hell, we can go all the way back to 1913 and the institution of the income tax and what it was claimed, the purpose for that was at the time, and then what it has gone on to become, which is the complete antithesis of the purpose that was claimed for the income tax when it was unlawfully brought into being back in 1913. It's it's going to be turned against people. It's not going to happen the first day. It's not going to happen the week after the technology is released or a month after or probably even a year after. But eventually, the it's supposed to become the norm. That's the way this is supposed to be going. They are systematically reducing the opportunities that we have to connect with one another as human beings by inserting technology into the middle of that connection. In other words, you connect to the technology, then the technology will connect you to somebody else, but it's not actually you that's doing anything. The somebody else is not doing anything. It's the technology that is doing all of the work. And at the end of the day, that is going to reduce you to nothing but uh, a meat sack as well. Just another interchangeable part in yet another machine. So the, the author of the article wants to point out that uh, in exploring this question, it is useful to consider why some women might resist becoming biological mothers even if they wouldn't need to shoulder the burden of raising a child that could be adopted after being transferred and fully developed in an artificial uterus. Oh, I don't know. Could it have anything to do with the feminist propaganda that has been shoved down women's throats for the last 60 years, if not more? Telling women that, it, no, you don't, you don't want to have children and raise a family and uh, be the, the matron of that family unit. No, what you want to do is you want to spend your time getting ahead in the world. You want to advance in your career. You want to uh, graduate into a position of power in your chosen field, and you want to be able to lord that power uh, over everyone that you come into contact with because you are a strong independent woman and you don't have to take no shit from nobody. Um, that might be one reason. Some hesitation might be caused by social attitudes and pressures related to biological parenthood. No, no, not at all. Not at all. Even if a legal system has absolved a biological mother of legal obligations toward her biological child, she might still feel a sense of obligation toward the child or guilt towards herself for not enshrining the self-sacrificing qualities often idealized and associated with motherhood. Living these emotions could cause the biological mother psychological harm. And she might also be at risk of encountering related social stigma. But fret not, ladies. I know for a fact they have got a pill that will fix this problem. You just need to go see your doctor and get a script. Granted, there still remains the question of whether the desire to avoid possible social stigma or psychological distress is enough to outweigh a fetus's purported right to life. We believe that this question is highly debatable, depending on both the extent of the social stigma and the developmental stage of the fetus. Still, if social pressures and stigma are enough that a woman who uses ectogenesis would suffer, the desire of such a woman not to become a mother deserves to be respected, especially in the early stages of a fetus's development. And this is the point uh, ladies and gentlemen, where I think I need to stop reading this article. There's not a whole lot left, as you can see. There's about three paragraphs that I have not touched on. 
you can peruse those at your leisure. The link is down in the description for anybody who wants to read along or read it on their own or maybe even make their own video uh, about this ridiculous article right here. Um, make no mistake about it, folks. This is not the last time that we are going to hear about this ectogenesis technology. This is not the first time that we have encountered this technology in the manufacturing reality media family. For folks who are not familiar with the manufacturing history series, this was actually part of uh, a video that was published back in December of 2022, so roughly four months ago. Actually, it might be almost exactly four months ago. Let's take a look here. Yeah, so this was week 50 in 2022. This was actually the clip that started uh, this video for folks who haven't seen this before or even for folks who have seen it but don't actually remember it. This was put out to the public four months ago uh, in order to prepare for you know, what was to come, the marketing campaign for ectogenesis. Check this out. Introducing Ectolife, the world's first artificial womb facility powered entirely by renewable energy. Ectolife allows infertile couple to conceive a baby and become the true biological parents of their own offspring. It's a perfect solution for women who had their uterus surgically removed due to cancer or other complications. With Ectolife, premature births and C-sections will be a thing of the past. Ectolife is designed to help countries that are suffering from severe population decline, including Japan, Bulgaria, South Korea, and many others. The facility features 75 highly equipped labs each state-of-the-art lab can accommodate up to 400 growth pods or artificial wombs. Every pod is designed to replicate the exact conditions that exist inside the mother's uterus. A single building can incubate up to 30,000 lab-grown babies per year. Ectolife allows your baby to develop in an infection-free environment. The pods are made of materials that prevent germs from sticking to their surfaces. Every growth pod features sensors that can monitor your baby's vital signs, including heartbeat, temperature, blood pressure, breathing rate, and oxygen saturation. The artificial intelligence-based system also monitors the physical features of your baby and reports any potential genetic abnormalities. The pods are equipped with a screen that displays real-time data on the developmental progress of your baby. These data are sent directly to your phone so you can track your baby's health from the comfort of your zone. The app also provides you with a high-resolution live view of your baby's development. They've got an app for your smartphone! A special section in the app allows you to watch a time-lapse of your baby's growth and share it directly with your loved ones. I also think we're kind of, I have to say, I think we're, oh, wow. Um, yeah, so uh, that's, that's a real thing. Um, that, that was the, the whole intent behind the manufacturing uh, history series to begin with, is that you know, these were going to be real clips that were put out to the public in, uh, you know, through various platforms. Um, probably some of this stuff doesn't reach everybody, but it is a part of what's going on in our world. And more specifically, uh, this move to remove mothers from the gestation and birthing process as they have been for probably millions of years at this point is 
yet just another way that they are trying, uh, the, the technocrats, I should say, are trying to separate us from anything natural in the world. Uh, never forget that when Klaus Schwab talks about the fourth industrial revolution that apparently is happening right now, that he's always fond of saying that it doesn't change what you are doing, but it changes you. And I was just checking to see if I had a, uh, I had a soundbite. I do have a soundbite of that, but I don't actually have it programmed uh, on to the soundboard, but I do have this one, which aptly describes the people that are creating this technology. They're a bunch of dumb shits. No offense. Yeah. So uh, yet another way to remove, remove the humanity from a human process and uh, digitize it, quantize it, and make it so that it can be overseen by a godlike AI that will control everything, or at least everything as far as you are concerned, because again, one of the main things that came out of the scamdemic was the bifurcation of society into two very distinct castes of human beings. In other words, we now have the privileged elite, as they like to refer to themselves, and we have everybody else, uh, which I tend to refer to as the Morlocks. Um, shout out H.G. Wells. This uh, isn't going to stop here, folks. They are going to keep advancing this technology. And again, that's not even to say that this stuff is even ready for prime time yet, right? Uh, because you could tell from that Ectolife video that every image that they were showing you was computer generated, right? There was not a single real world shot of anything anywhere in that video. So what that tells me is they don't actually have the technology ready to go yet, but they want you to believe that they do because they want you to sign up for it right now. They want your buy-in right now. And most importantly, they want your money right now because that's what they actually need to get this stuff built. They are hoping, they are hoping, they're praying, they are wishing that you will actually buy into all of this nonsense. And hopefully I can stop hitting my mic. Uh, that you will buy into this nonsense and opt in to their global dystopia that they are trying to create on this planet. You know, I can't tell you what to do, but uh, here's what I would say. When it comes to technology, one of the things that I have come to understand throughout the course of my life, and again, no small amount of time on this planet, pushing five decades at this point, uh, when it comes to things like technology, all right, which is a very broad and general term, and it, as far as I can tell, it's never going to be uh, uh, any more clearly defined than what it already is. It's basically a catch-all term for uh, any sort of process that can be employed to create a specific outcome. That's, that's essentially what technology is. Like this pen is technology. All right. This coffee mug is technology. And obviously this mouse is also technology. Technology is essentially a tool, a tool that allows you to get a job done. So don't let these assholes gaslight you into thinking that they're smarter than you, that they've got things figured out that you don't, or that the stuff that they're showing you is even possible because most of this stuff isn't. But, but isn't it interesting? And I'll, I'll leave you guys with this parting shot because I see I'm already at almost 40 minutes here, which is much, much longer than I wanted to take on this particular issue. You know, but what the hell? Uh, it's content, right? Um, take the time to learn about this stuff, all right? Don't just accept that because it's in an article on a, on a 
well-respected website or that it comes from an authoritative source or any of that bullshit that they use to trick you into believing shit that's not true. Do your own research, all right? Gather your own data. Come to your own conclusions on it. I know it's hard. It's difficult, especially for folks that have had everything handed to them their entire lives, right? That's, that's the way American society was set up. It was set up so that we did not have to work for anything, that everything was essentially given to us. Yeah, sometimes we had to bitch in order to get it, but it was essentially given to us so that we came to expect that entitlement, right? And did not learn to do for ourselves. So the easiest way, the easiest way to keep yourself out of the technocratic control grid is to learn to do for yourself and literally to do everything for yourself. And if there are things that you can't do for yourself because you don't possess that particular skill set, find somebody who does. Develop that relationship because more than likely, there's something that you can provide for them that they're not capable of providing for themselves. And then you exchange that for the thing that they can provide for you that you can't provide for yourself. You see how that works? That's basically how humans have interacted with each other over the course of the last, you know, I will say 50,000 years, right? Because it's hard to find evidence going back any further than that. But I'm going to leave that right there. Uh, Klaus Schwab and his buddies over at the economic forum are pushing this nightmare scenario through as fast as they can. And they have more than enough money for the marketing budget to make sure that it gets in front of every single human face on this planet. All right. Eh, Times now folks, the, the, the time is now to start building a better world instead of just allowing these assholes to force what they want on us. That's all I'm going to say about this one right now. Uh, We'll check back in at some point in the future. I don't know exactly when. I might have a surprise for Liberty Radio listeners this coming Saturday. That's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, Just keep an eye out and maybe we'll have something brand new this weekend. But until next time, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Keep learning your way forward and uh, eventually we'll figure out how to get out of this mess.